Today, everything about batteries in chess. You will learn from the best and increase your rating. We show you lightning fast batteries and how to use them to your advantage. But first, what is a battery? A battery is lining up heavy pieces on the same file. It could also be the bishop and the queen on the diagonal. And in both cases, they can exert a lot of pressure on the opponent. So this is an example where we can line up the heavy pieces of the white side of the board. Here, white can play rook to f1, putting both rooks on the same file and creating a lot of pressure on the knight and the f-file of the opponent. If we move to this position, you can already see that the bishop is on the long diagonal, looking at the h7 pawn of the opponent. Can you create a battery here? Yes. By moving the queen here, you line up the bishop and the queen threatening checkmate. So here, black needs to act, for example, by playing his knight to f6, defending the h7 square. Okay, so now you know the basics of batteries. For example, this is a game of Alekhin with the white pieces, and I think it's a great example on how you create a battery and win also with this setup. So here, black played the rook to c7, as this knight is already pinned to the queen, with the bishop, trying to double up the rooks. And this is what Alekhin does, putting his rook one square forward, which feels like doesn't make a lot of sense, but there's a long-term plan behind it. Black tries to defend. Another rook move. This is weird, right? The rooks were just standing here. Now they've both moved one square forward. But now you will see the plan behind Alekhin's choices. He moves the queen to c1, lining up not only two rooks, but two rooks and the queen on the knight and the rook. So this is very strong and black needs to defend here, which he does. White goes back. Black sacrifices a pawn. Takes back. Black tries to get closer with his king. Defending it. And Alekhin simply plays h4 and Black simply resigned in this position as black simply cannot move. Then moving to this game with Dubov on the white side of the board in the Tata Steel tournament a few years ago. Can you see a way to set up the battery here? The rook is already on the d-file pinning this knight and you can exert more pressure by putting your queen on d6. And that's what Dubov did and also made him win this game. Because what can you do against the knight, which is attacked multiple times, and also the pin on the rook. White played knight to f4 in this position. Do you see a one move win for black? You attack the knight, but you also threaten checkmate on b2. And remember, loose pieces drop off. LPDO. The knight is a loose piece, not defended by white's pieces, and therefore a vulnerability. And that's what Black took advantage of. This is a game from Bernstein in the early 1900s. And it's a Sicilian game. There we go. e4, c5, knight c3, pretty common. Knight c6, nothing new. And white starts to break in the center, which is a very thematical move. Of course, Black takes the pawn in the center, takes back. And we have a very common setup which has reached millions of times. Here we take the knight. And there is a move in between. Black actually takes the knight on c3 with check. Checking the king. And first, of course, white needs to recapture the bishop and gets a double pawn. We also made a movie on the seven most important principles of the middle games and creating weaknesses in your pawn structure is not something advised. These two double pawns are quite weak. Watch this video. Check it out here. But at the same time, black is also weak on the dark squares, right? It did take our knight here, but therefore it lost his black bishop. Can we take advantage of that? Yes, we can. So bishop a3 is already a very good move. Taking away the dark squares and castling. Of course, there's still knight here, but... Also, when this knight is gone, it's still not a possibility because the bishop takes away this square and therefore castling is not allowed for black at the moment. 
black decides to go on the offensive and attacks both the bishop and the pawn on c3. A double attack. What are we doing now? If we move the bishop away, then this pawn is hanging. But that's not what white played. Can we actually set up a battery here? I'm Mr. X, and together with my assistant Barry, well, hi, we will take you through your journey to become a better chess player. From beginner to expert level, we're here to assist you. Keep on watching and make sure to subscribe. Yes, we can. The bishop is already on this diagonal and we can line up the queen on the same diagonal, threatening checkmate on two squares. Well, actually one square, but if the knight moves in order to prevent this square, then this is also a checkmate right on this square. So this is also what white played, but you are giving up your rook with a check. So does it work out? Let's see. And white can simply move the king forward. And now, as you can see, there is no checks. Well, there's a check here. But then you give away your queen. And this will still be a checkmate. Or if this is played, then this is a checkmate. So black resigned in this position. And then I think another great example of a battery. In the French defense position. We defend the knight, because if black takes, then we take back. We have an active bishop in the center of the board. A centralized bishop is very good. Aiming at all sides of the board. Moving in the queen to e2. Do you already see a battery setup coming up sooner or later here? Let's see. Black castles. Bishop to g5. And here black makes a crucial mistake and place his pawn to b6. Do you see the winning move here for white? Knight takes f6 and in this position black resigned. Why? Do you see the battery coming up? Okay, so let's say if you take back, then we would take. Black takes back and now we set up the battery. Threatening checkmate and also threaten to take this rook in the corner. Remember, loose pieces drop off. This rook is loose, not defended, and therefore drops off easily. And that's what Y spotted. And there was nothing anymore black could do about it after this take. Because after this move, we would simply move our queen here as well. Threatening the mate and the rook as well. Then, one of my favorites, Mikael Tal, very well known offensive. An attacking player in this game plays against Kiryakov. Let's see how he uses the battery. The Queen's Gambit. This is a very common Queen's Gambit exchange variation where the pawns are exchanged very early on. Bishop g5, pinning the knight to the queen. Bishop b4, bishop d3. So this is very common in these kind of setups where white gets a very good bishop aiming at the h7 square and often there will be a battery with a queen on c2. h6, kicking away our bishop. We don't take the knight here ever because if you take back we simply have lost one of our bishops and this is also a principle of the middle game. Keep your bishop pair. So instead we go backwards and we keep this annoying pin, right? Because if the queen would go here, then we take, because then we actually demolish black's pawn structure, and the king's position is very weak now. Instead, black takes in the center, we castle, black takes, we take back, and now we try to set up a battery, but then with the queen first. So that's why Tal played bishop to c2. Bishop retreats in order to cancel this pin on the queen. Now the bishop is in between. The queen can actually move. Now we see this beautiful battery aiming up at the h7 square. So if we are allowed to take here, then this is a checkmate. I will show it if black plays, for example, this. Take, take, checkmate. So black needs to act, g6. 
And now we play the rook to e1. And black plays also the rook to the e file. Do you see the winning move here? Well, toss on it. We can simply take the bishop. And this is where black resigns. Because if we take back, there's a deadly check here. And this will be a checkmate. And Tal won this game. Excellent. In this position, you will see the battery of the queen and the bishop, and also the half open h file with the rook on it. How can you take advantage of this? Well, if you play your bishop to h6, you attack the bishop. You cannot really go away, because then the rook hangs. If you take it, then you will have a battery with the rook and the queen, which is very strong. Instead, decides to take this knight and to distract white's queen, but white doesn't fall for it and decides to take the bishop. If you take back, there's a check on h6, the king goes back, and if you now attack the defender of this square, because a checkmate is threatened here, the knight has to get in between, which it does, and now you can simply destroy black's kingside position by taking the knight and sacrificing your rook, black decides to take the rook. There's no open files for the rook now, but there's an even stronger move. Do you see it? g6, yes, because this pawn is pinned and you cannot take. So there's only one move with which you can take the pawn. With the h pawn, yes, you can simply take it because the pawn is still pinned. Check. The king goes here. You take the other pawn. King comes forward. Check. There's a check on the h file. The queen cuts off the last squares of the king. The bishop has to come in between. And now this is simply a checkmate. Beautiful game. And if you like this video, please make sure to subscribe and support the channel.